Okay, so next up, we're just trying to solve this differential equation. Um, it's going to take some integration, so I'm going to copy it on the next page and work through it there. Just so that we all have it kind of in a row. Um, I'm looking at 0 equal to x dw dx plus 6w. And so I can go ahead and rearrange that in a form that um, is separable. Let's see, I've got minus 6w over x is equal to dw dx, or um, dw over w is equal to minus 6 dx over x. And from there, I'm just integrating. So integral dw over w is equal to minus 6, the integral of dx over x. So natural log w is equal to minus 6 natural log of x plus a constant. If I'm being very careful, if I forget about that constant, it just goes away. So don't worry. Um, and then I want to solve for w. So I'm going to go ahead and move my negative 6 inside my natural log like that plus a constant, and then take the exponent of both sides. which is just going to give me um, some constant times e to the natural log of x to the minus 6. e to the natural log undoes itself, so I'm just looking at c times x to the minus 6. And so I've gotten to this point where I had my reduced ODE and I solved it. And I had done that by taking w equal to u prime, so now I'm starting to undo everything. So w is equal to u prime, so u is equal to the integral of w with respect to x. That's the integral of c x to the minus 6 with respect to x. So that's just going to be um, c over negative 5 x to the minus 5. If you add a constant on, um, we'll go ahead and do that and you can see how it all simplifies. And then I know what u is, so I can say that I know what y2 is. Since I said that y2 is equal to u times y1, um, that's going to be what I just found for u was c1 over minus 5x to the minus 5 plus c2. Um, I actually may have called that just and c1. Sorry about that. Don't want to change notation on you. And then y1 was given to us way at the start of the problem as x squared um, right there, so we just plug it right in. Um, so y2 is going to be equal to c over minus 5, x to the minus 5 times x squared is going to be x to the minus 3 plus c1 x squared. So I found the second solution. Um, and the general solution is um, y equal to, I would usually say c1, c2, but I'm using c's already, so I'll just say a times y1 plus b times y2. So that's a times x squared plus b times c over minus 5x to the minus 3 plus c1 x squared. But I want to have only two unknown constants. So I'm going to go ahead and um, note that these x squareds are the same thing. So I can say, okay, that's x squared times a plus b c1, and that's x to the minus 3 times b, c over minus 5. a, b, c, 1, c, those are all just random numbers that I don't really know. So I can go ahead and um, just rewrite them like this.
And so my general solution would just be C1x squared plus C2x to the minus 3. And I use like different notation for every constant along the way, but you don't have to do that. You could um, reuse it. It's fine, um, as long as you just only have two at the end. because you would have enough conditions in an initial value problem to solve for those. But you wouldn't have enough to solve for A, B, C1, and C. And then real quick, we can verify that this works. So we found sort of these two distinct parts of our general solution were x squared and x to the minus 3. So x squared and x to the minus 3 are what we think are our fundamental solution set. There are two of them, so we're good there because it's a second order differential equation. And we would just want to check, do they satisfy the ODE we were thinking about, which was 0 equal to x squared y double prime plus 2xy prime minus 6y. So um, for y1 equal to x squared, that one was given to us. But we can go ahead and check it anyhow. So the derivatives would be 2x and then 2. And 0 is equal to x squared times 2 plus 2x, 2x minus 6x squared. We saw that inside of our um, actual solution. That was the thing that turned into 0 to when it was multiplied by u. And then y2 is x to the minus 3. So y2 prime is minus 3x to the minus 4, and y2 double prime is 12x to the minus 5th. And so we've got 0 is equal to x squared, 12x to the minus 5th, plus 2x times negative 3x to the minus 4, minus 6x squared, oops, minus 6 times x to the minus 3. Mm. Which is going to give us x squared times x to the minus 5th is x to the minus 3 times 12. Minus 2 times 3 is 6. x times x to the minus 4th is x to the minus 3. Minus 6 x to the minus 3 is 0. So they both satisfy the ODE. And then we can check that this strange approach we took actually created linearly independent solutions. So we would want to put our, um, let's see, x squared and x to the minus 3 right there, then our 2x and our minus 3x to the minus 4. So our determinant is x squared times minus 3x to the minus 4 minus x to the minus 3 times 2x. So that's minus 3x to the minus 2 minus 2x to the minus 2, which isn't 0. So yes, this thing that we said would give us a fundamental solution set did work. And you don't have to check this in general. Um, reduction of order will always lead to a second solution 
which is linearly independent from the first. I only showed you this because it's not obvious from the way that we solve for y2 that this would be true, but when you're doing these problems, I don't expect you to do the same. Um, so I'm going to stop here. The next video, we're just going to wrap.